Thank you guys so much for being here. Seize the day, part six is finally here. I promise we are going to be done with 1 Samuel 17 today. Are y'all glad? I hope you're glad to be here. I am honestly, I'm very glad that you're all here for this one. Uh, I, I got to be honest, the last six weeks for me have, have been a little bit of a blur, but they've been special. Uh, what, what I feel like I have learned in preparing for this series uh, and the, the conversations I've, I've got to have with many of you, I've just been so encouraged. I think it's been a special time together. Uh, we have a lot to celebrate and to keep on celebrating. We had people ask Christ into their life right here last week. And so if you're one of those people, you've asked Christ into your life, I, I want to ask you to do two things. Number one, I want you to begin considering baptism. I think it's the natural next step when you've accepted Christ is to go public with, with that decision and to let people know that you've done that. And so if that's something you're interested in, you can come talk to me. You can send us a message on Facebook. Just get a hold of us and talk to us about it. We'll explain it to you if you have questions about it. I just feel like baptism is, is the next big step, man. I'm telling you, in your journey, it's just so important. The second thing I want to encourage you to do is if you don't have a Bible, uh, something we have begun doing here at GCC is we have Bibles for you. We have New Living Translations, brand new leather-bound Bibles out there at the Connection Center. And in it, they have, we have a scripture that we've marked, uh, that the staff has marked, that we love, and kind of our explanations of it. It's a great little Bible, and we would love for you to have it. It's free and clear. The reason that we give, and the reason that so many of you give, is so that, so that we can do things like that, so that we can put a Bible into a brand new Christian's hand. And so we appreciate that. And so be sure you go take one, because we'll just buy more. That's what we're going to do. Okay, and we want you to have it. Uh, we are the, in the second week of February, and we have formulated quite the attack on 2023 and beyond. Seize the day. One day at a time, we are directing all of our attention towards the giants, the battles, the fights, the struggles that we each face in our lives. The examples we've used this entire series that I feel like are, are kind of the battles that should be on the forefront of our, the, of our minds, the fights that we should be focusing on, our relationship with God. In this busy, uh, busy world with, with tons of other things vying for our attention, I believe our relationship with God, that is a fight that we should be focused on. Our health, our marriages, parenting, finances, addictions that we have in our lives, all of these things are facets of our lives, areas of our life that I believe we should be turning our attention towards in order to make us the best people we could possibly be, the most effective people we could possibly be to help our families and the people around us. We are meeting those battles head on, I hope we are, with victorious intentions, right? Is everybody with me? Would you be okay with a little recap, a little bit of a quiz? It's the last one of the series. I'm so glad you're here, Katie. <laughs> Let's do a little bit of a, re a recap. Message one, we discovered it's your fight to make. We realized that in our lives, there are fights. There are things that we should be turning our attention towards, things that we deem unacceptable, things that should be better, uh, things that need more focus and more attention. And those are, in fact, our fights to make. It is our responsibility to do what is necessary, right? That was lesson one. Next, we learned that fighting is a habit. We discussed that it's the day-to-day -day choices that greatly affect the tides of the battle. It's these little things that we do that are just habitual, that we do without really even thinking about them. Those little decisions every single day have an incredible impact on how the fight is going. It's the habits we keep determine the places we reach. You remember that one? The habits we keep determine the places that we reach. Message three, we talked about the importance of having a good plan. If we're headed into any sort of fight, you best have a good plan. We need to take time beforehand to figure out, to come up with some sort of battle plan. How best is it that we proceed? What are the resources we have at our disposal? What is it that we can sacrifice and should be sacrificing in order to be successful right here? We need to have a good plan. Then we talked about some side opposition. Everybody still with me? You remember this? We talked about some side opposition en route to this fight. The naysayers. Y'all remember them? Who likes them, you know? 
Discouragement is a constant byproduct when you begin addressing the giants and addressing the fights in your life. Inevitably, discouragement is going to find its way in front of you. Maybe in a person, maybe in someone who cares about you and loves you just fine, maybe intentionally or unintentionally, but they may end up discouraging you and then it has a way of infecting our minds and we will discourage ourselves as we begin to address these fights. We have to learn to ignore the naysayers. Ignore the naysayers, lest they send us back to the fields watching, watching the sheep, send us back to the porch, or cause us to give up on our missions. Last week, we probably got the best piece of news we've gotten the entire series. Y'all remember? What was the lesson? It's God's fight to win, so you better bring God with you. It's God's fight to win, so you better bring God with you. In every way possible, we must be sure that God is a part of our battle. We proclaim him in the beginning, that God is with us. We make sure that we're, we're, we're taking him in up front. We involve him through prayer. We make sure that our actions and our words and everything that we're doing is in accordance with his word, that we're, we're living in obedience with him as we head into this fight. And then we trust God with the results. We trust that he's going to win the battle for us. That he's going to make us successful. That he's going to take our efforts and our availability and our willingness to be there. And he's going to do something incredible with it. Right, Scott? That's what we do. Everybody caught up? Everybody got one, t- one time, say, everybody say, yeah, we good. Yeah. Good. So it dawned on me recently. In this series, as I was preparing this series, it it dawned on me that we've been doing all this fighting talk, all this stuff about fighting, all these analogies about fighting, and not once have I told you about a real Tim McCall fight. So after some thought, I decided I'm not going to do it. (laughs) I'm not. I'm not going to talk about it. Because here's the truth. I don't really have anything good to say. When I think back to the fights, and this is, this is what I'll say. This is the little piece of information I'll give you because I think it's necessary for you to know that I do understand a little bit about what I'm talking about. Is This is the only fact I'll share with you. I've been in a fight or two. Everybody good with that? Your pastor, I've been in, in a mix-up or, or two. Okay? And in those fights, I have to admit, there were never any honorable reasons for fighting. Most of the time I ended up in a fight because somebody popped off at me or I popped off at them. And if I'm being completely honest, chances are wherever I was, I was looking for the opportunity to get in a fight. Okay, so I don't want you to think anything about this. But I want to tell you something that I learned early on in fighting. I believe it's it's something that you just have to understand. Uh, Early on in fighting, I I discovered this. It really doesn't matter whether you win or you lose. Pain is going to be involved. Everybody with me? Y'all can loosen up a little bit. Everybody loosen up a little bit. It doesn't really matter whether you win or lose because pain is going to be involved. Inevitably, there will be pain and suffering associated with any fight you find yourself in. This is what I'm saying. You will likely experience in a fight discomfort, soreness, and strain. Okay? You're going to get a little beat up. You will inevitably have bruises and swelling to show for your efforts. You know why? I'm going to clue y'all in in case you didn't know. Because if you get hit, it hurts. Okay? If you get kicked, it hurts. Matter of fact, if you get hit anywhere here in this vicinity, it hurts. And it's going to leave a mark. If you get hit like right here, like you would think like this is a hard part, like the edge of your ear, it hurts so bad to get hit right there. You know what I'm saying? And, and it just doesn't matter. And if you find yourself wrestling around and you run into something like, a, like a, the hitch of a truck or a urinal, <laughs> it hurts. I'm sorry, I'm just explaining this. And as if that's not enough, if you hit somebody with this it hurts this 
your hands will be sore. Okay? You're going to get beat. And, and God forbid a weapon get involved, like a baseball bat <laughs> or something else. You're going to get really hurt. Okay? You're going you're to get beat up pretty bad. Matter of fact, just the grappling part alone, you will pull muscles that you did not know you had. Every fight I was ever in, I promise you this, every fight I was ever in, days following, led to, it led to real soreness. Stitches. Hurt feelings. I laid up days, week, didn't matter. Every fight I was ever in, win, lose, draw, didn't matter. So kids, I want you to consider this. If you're a young person, you're, you're more likely to get in a fight. Some of us older folks. I want you to listen to me. Public service announcement. Ready? Everybody ready? This is from your pastor. Do not fight. Everybody hear me saying this, right? See, this is how I get through this stuff. You know what I mean? Physical confrontation is not the answer. Everybody hear that? Okay, unless they really deserve it. All right, moving on. Uh, I say, <clears throat> anyway, I say all of that to illustrate this. In our fights, in the fights of our lives, there will be pain and there will be suffering. Most likely, when we begin addressing these things in our life, I want you to understand there will be some bumps and some bruises that come along the way. Pain and suffering will be involved. Attacking your health. You making it a deal that you're going to focus on your health and you're going to do better or you're going to take care of them, you're going to do some things. I want you to understand something. There will be pain involved. In improving our marriages, come on, y'all. Come on. Talk about exertion. Talk about torture. I mean, stuff, I mean <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> there will be some pain involved. Parenting, come on. Talk about sacrificing. Talk about agony as you try to take care of these kids. You try to, you try to be, uh, be better parents and you try to parent them more and then watch them go off and live their life and do dumb things. You'll never get more beat up than that. There will be struggles and strains as you begin to address your finances. And I can promise you this because we, we have the opportunity here to walk through this journey with people. There will be absolute torment in addressing your addictions in life. Everybody with me? There will just be pain involved. You will get bumped and bruised. You will get wore out. You will be tired. You will be beaten up if you step into these fights that we've been talking about. And I know you're like, Tim, this is the final lesson. Why in the world would you be telling us now, oh yeah, by the way, expect suffering. Expect difficulty. Expect getting beat up. Why would you tell us this now? Because... I want you to understand, oftentimes what happens is we step into these fights, we engage. And once we engage, we realize how difficult it's going to be, how much pain there's going to be involved. And what does it cause us to do? It causes us to quit. Because we go, it's hard. Because we say it's hard. It causes us to quit. So, why even bother? That's got to be the question. If it's going to be painful, if it's going to be difficult, it's going to be hard, there's going to be suffering, then why even bother? That's the question I would like to answer with this final message. Are you all ready? 1 Samuel chapter 17 is where we are going to be. We pick up in the story the moment that the Lord, uh, the, I'm sorry, we, we pick up in the story the moment the sword falls on Goliath's neck. His own sword, David's holding it, it falls on his neck, game over. He is decapitated, the giant is gone, Goliath is dead. The problem that has been towering over the Israelites for over a month is gone. He's been slain by David. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 51, this is the very next verse, this is what it says. It says, when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Remember what we're looking for, we're looking for a why to go. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. 
ran. This is what we know. Goliath was dead, right? And that's a great thing. The giant is gone. The problem that we've been talking about for six weeks is finally gone. But look what happens beyond that. The vast Philistine army that has been standing vigilant, right, on this other ridge, arrogant, superiorly. They've been standing there, resting on the taunts of their giant champion. All of a sudden, they feel a surge of something new. And they don't even know how it happens. But they feel fear. That's what happens. Fear grips them. I believe this. It ran through their eyes as they watched David slay their giant champion in Goliath. There, it ran into their eyes. It ran down their spines. And it hit their legs. And next thing you know, without them even realizing what's happening, their legs are turning them. And they are running with everything they possibly had. They didn't heed the agreement that their champion had issued. Right? The deal was is one-on-one contest, whoever wins, wins the field, win, you know, surrender, they have to return over spoils, they would come to some sort of agreement, something like that. No, sir, the Philistine army is caught off guard, so caught off guard by what happens that they turn and they are terrified and they run with everything they possibly can to get away from there. That's what happens. Have you ever seen anyone run out of absolute fear? I mean, Really? Like, not, not just kind of kind of running, but running because they are absolutely terrified of what's behind them. I have. We used to have this family reunion up in Tennessee. I thought about it this morning, actually. I hadn't planned on telling this story. But we used to have this family reunion, be like 70 or 80 of us, youngest to old. I mean, tiny kids to, to the super old great-grandparents, you know. And one of the things we would always do is, is we would go out in this big, huge field. They had this cool little place where they had a fire pit. And you kind of sit up on the hills around it. And we would all sit out there. We'd all walk out there. It took a long time. It was like, a, I don't know, probably a half mile or something to get there. And we'd get out there, and we would all tell stories around the fire. And then they would always end up telling ghost stories. Well, I had these two cousins that were crazy guys. And they told this story about a guy. That, and I think they were, like, feeding off of one another. But it was a guy, and he was missing his foot. And he would come out of the woods chasing people going, Where's my foot? Where's my foot? And it was terrifying. Okay. I mean, it was like the way they could, they were good. And I, we were terrified. Well, the, you know, the night ended, they poured water on the fire, and they're like, all right, everybody head back to the event center. So we're all walking, youngest to old, you know, I mean, just all of us. And all of a sudden, out of the bushes comes this guy dressed in rags, and he's going, give me my foot, give me my foot, where's my foot? And I'm talking about this whole family. <laughs> I mean, there were 90-year-old women pushing kids down. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I have never ran like that ever in my life. I'm talking about like it was every man for himself. <laughs> Didn't care about nobody. Family who? You know? That is what I imagine for some reason. When I think about the way this Philistine army ran, they were dropping everything. They left everything. It was get out of Dodge as fast as you possibly could. David's decisive victory over their champion sent them in a panic. And that's all they could think to do. Read verse 52 with me. Then there's something else that's happening. Something else is happening because of this fight. Then the men of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines. Now, hang on a second. The Philistines were all bold and arrogant when they had their giant. Now the giant is gone. And the Israelites were scared to death, embarrassed because nobody had been willing for 40 days to go up and fight the, Goliath, uh, the giant Goliath. And now all of a sudden, their fear is gone. The, the, the chains that held them were severed. And these men who were scared to death are all of a sudden shouting victory, shouting triumph. And they hadn't done a thing, Ann. They had done nothing. They had a change of heart just like that. They found their legs carrying them forward. They recognized all of a sudden that their swords 
could be unsheathed, that they could go to work and go to battle. Their spears could be thrown again. They charged after the Philistines, this is what the Bible says, with might. And look at what it says, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. All right, now stop for just a second, because I wanted to see, I wanted to, I wanted to understand what was really happening with the Israelites. I mean, how emboldened were they? How courageous were they really being? How transformed were they? In reality. So I did a little research. You know how far the valley of Elah is? From the gates of Ekron? Almost 20 miles. It says 15 to 20 miles is about how far these Israelite soldiers began chasing this, hang on a second, retreating army. They were chasing these Philistines down and killing them. That's not a flash in the pan courage. That's a transform mentality. You see that? That's a faith that's been built in them through what they've just witnessed happen. This is what it says. It says, The bodies of the dead and the wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road from Sharam as far as Gath and Ekron. 15 to 20 miles. Then the Israelite army returned. Everybody see this? Everybody look him? The Israelite army returned, and they plundered the deserted Philistine camp. I think this is important to note. I think if, there, if there's uh, the way that I understand the way this would have worked with that battle being won, you know, the one-on-one contest, they would have come to an agreement and a, and a truce kind of after that, and they would have gotten the better spoils and all of these things. No, sir. There was a completely full Philistine camp with all of the spoils and all of the goods and all of the things and the Israelites just walked in there picked it up these guys they didn't have I mean what had they done for 40 days they had been sitting there unwilling to take a step forward and now all of a sudden they're they're getting spoils and and all kinds of goods all kinds of things for their families they gathered it all Enemies ran. The Israelites charged. And they gathered the spoils. Do you see the lesson? What are we answering? Why is it worth it? If you know you're going to get bumped and bruised, you know it's going to be hard, you know it's going to be a struggle, then why go? Here's our point. Final message. Everybody ready? Ready? You should go because your fights are bigger than you. You listen? Your fights, they're bigger than you. The results, the consequences of you fighting or not, it's bigger than you. Your fights are about so much more than your own triumph or your own cost. Look at all that happened. Everybody go with me real quick. One more time into the story. Everybody ready? One more time into David right here. Look at all that happened from one young man, from David, choosing to make a fight his own. Look at what happened because he took his everyday responsibilities of protecting sheep seriously. Look at the results of a well-fitting, executed plan. Look and see what the naysayers could not see. Peer into the results of a fight that only God could win. Are you with me? David's life, first off, would never be the same. David's life would never be the same. This was the first in, in fights and in many that would lead him to become the next king of Israel. He would leave the fields watching sheep forever. He would be placed into certain circles and into certain responsibilities and certain fights and battles. And next thing you know, David becomes the next king of Israel. So his life was changed forever. He went from the field to the palace. But I want you to look deeper. Long-standing enemies of his people were now running terrified. 
Israelite soldiers, once crippled with fear, were now inspired, motivated, transformed. Spoils and blessings abounded for everyone that found themselves near David. Do you see that? They were just, they just happened to be there. They just happened to be in the army at that time. David made that fight his fight. He faced Goliath in the right way, and look what happened for them. And truthfully, if I had time this morning, and we could really get into it, I could show you how this fight, this singular contest between a teenage boy and a giant, I could show you how instrumental it was in moving an entire nation of people back closer to God. How it moved them and took took them where God wanted them to go. You see that? There was a bigger picture. There were more lives on the line than just David. There were more ramifications for one man choosing to fight and doing it right than we could ever possibly understand. As a matter of fact, all of the things that that, that people try to track back to this one to fight between David and Goliath, I'm telling you, researchers and scholars have, have studied it forever. And they take so much back to this one kid going, I'll fight him. I'll fight. In your battles, you need to know this. It's the same thing. Everybody listen to me. Everybody with me? You need to know it's exactly the same thing. So often as we head into our fights, we get so self-centered, so focused on ourselves, So focused on our own plight, our own pain that we're having to deal with. And all the details of the fight that we we begin to believe that this fight is just ours. That it's just about us. We start to really think that it's just about us and us winning or losing. And and so it makes it so much easier to just be like, "Ah, I'm done with this or I'm done with that or I'm moving on or I'm going here. I'm going there. I'm not I'm not dealing with this anymore. And I'm telling you, we have such a tendency to do that. But you need to understand something. If you're here this morning and the fight in your life. The fight in your life right here in your home. In Wahala or Seneca or Tomasi or Salem or Westminster or wherever it is that you live, that fight that's happening in your life and in your home, or if you're watching online and you're wherever it is that you find yourself, that fight that's happening right there in your life and your home, you have to understand it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. And what will come from it is bigger than you. And the people that it affects, it's not just you. Your story has the same potential and the same potential impact. There's so much more to it than that. The fights that you make and the decisions that you make and the things that you do, they won't just affect you. This is what I'm saying. If you want to write a sentence down, this is the one I would write. You won't be the only casualty of the fights you retreat from. And you won't be the only victor of the fights you win. You hear me? You won't be the only casualty of the fights you retreat from, and you won't be the only victor of the fights that you win. Your fight is bigger than you. Imagine the results in your life. Y'all mind doing imagination with me right here? Everybody close your eyes real quick for a second. I like to do that because it just limits distractions. Close your mind. Imagine the results of you being devoted, focused in your relationship with God. Imagine who you would be if you fought for your relationship with God every single day. Now imagine who you would be. Now this. Imagine how does that affect the people in your life? 
How does that affect the people around you? How different of a person would you be, and how would that benefit the people around you, the people that you come in contact with, the people that you live with, the people that you work with? Keep your eyes closed. Listen to me. What kind of cycle would be changed by you addressing your health? What kind of consequences? What, what could be the results of that? How would that affect you? How would that affect others? What kind of family would yours be if you shifted your focus, you shifted your fight, the fight in your life, to loving your spouse the best you possibly could? Parenting your children with intentionality and consistency, bringing God into that. What, what could your family look like? How different could it be? When you pick the kids up from school, how differently would that look? When you all got together in the evening and you sat down at the dinner table, what would that look like? And how would it affect them for the rest of their lives? How could they take what you're doing and build on that? What if those finances weren't hanging over your head every single day? Who could you bless? How could you bless them? What could you do? What if that pattern of addiction stopped with you? What if you were able to give your kids something other than an excuse? What if you could show the people in your life what it looked like to fight for it? To fight for something better. What if they could see what it looks like to fight to be the man or the woman of God that you want to be? To be the husband or the wife that you know you should be, the parents that you mom and dad that you know you should be, the people and the Christians and the followers of Jesus that you know you should be, how different would the people look around you? What if your neighbors saw this happening? What if they saw you changing? What if your transformation was such a landslide victory that nobody could deny that God was real? Look at me. Can I tell you what would happen? Enemies would run. Enemies would run. Friends would follow. Friends and family would follow you. And spoils would be had by all. Blessings would abound. That's the truth. That's the way it works. When God calls us to fights... When he sends us somewhere and we end up on the edge of a battlefield and there's a fight out there that we could choose to make ours, seldom is it about just us. Seldom is it about only you. Often, it's about all those around you. I want to end it like I started it. In 2018, I told you guys, in 2018, I was in the worst place I have ever been since following Jesus mentally emotionally physically I was in the darkest place in my life and spiritually I was in the gutter I told you that and one of the things I learned as I began to address these fights is man there is pain there is suffering there are difficult things that come up and it's not always easy but I want to tell you what kept me going what kept me going is I know what I'm fighting for first off I'm fighting for him because I believe that having a relationship with him is the best possible thing for me period I'm fighting for him but then I'm fighting for her it's not just about me it's about her it's about my kids and who they're going to be. The lives they're going to lead. And the people they're going to touch. And I'm not going to lie. It's about you. It's about this church. I fight for you. Because I believe that this church is supposed to affect Oconee County and our community. And reach as many lost people as it possibly can. And the only way they'll do that is if I'm fighting all the fights I'm supposed to be fighting. 
And I'm able to be here. And I'm able to lead. Your fight's bigger than you. That's how you keep going. Every single one of you should be able to put faces in your mind that you're fighting for. Whatever it is that you're addressing, whatever fight it is that you're making, I'm telling you, put those faces in your mind. Put God at the top. Put those people in your heart and in your mind. Look to your left and right because I'm telling you, ultimately, we're fighting for one another. That's the truth. We're fighting for one another. In order for us to be the people that God wants us to be and for this church to make the difference that it's supposed to make, every single one of us better be willing to fight. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for each and every person that is here. And this is the prayer. This is my final prayer over this time that we've had together. Make them fighters. Draw them, God, close to you. I want each and every person here in the sound of this, this, my voice and this video, if they're watching the video, I want them, God, to be in real relationship with you, following you every step of the way. God, I pray that you show them the areas of their life that they need to be addressing and you help them to fight those battles. Help them to remember what it is that they're fighting for. They're fighting for their families. They're fighting for their friends. They're fighting for the the people that they work with or the people in their family who are lost and don't know you. And they're fighting for the future for the generations that are to come. This fight is bigger than us, and we can't possibly know the difference that can come from one of us looking ahead and saying, I'm going to fight. I pray this, God. I pray that you use it in a mighty, mighty way, a way like only you can, and that what we see happen is we see a lot of wins we see marriages marriages that look a lot more a lot more like that love relationship that we've talked about we see kids who are getting loved and taught and raised up to follow Jesus we see people that were once stuck in addiction being raised up out of it and stepping out of it victorious we see Situations in life change. Hard things, big giants fall away. And God, this is my prayer above all, that you get the glory for every single piece of it. That all of it, every bit of it, points back to you and not us. Keep reaching. Help us, help us, God. I pray that you keep using us. Help us reach our neighbors and the people around us with this same message. Help us inspire them that they can make the same fights that we're making and that you will be just as faithful to them as you are to us. That is my prayer. Father, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, everybody says amen. Amen. I love you guys very much. I hope you have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Bye-bye.